next storyteller is one of the funniest and most genuine people I know. And I've known her for a few years now. She's another one I just said, will you tell a story? I don't care what it is. Will you tell a story? When I heard her story, I was really deeply moved, and I'm sure you will be too. Let's give a nice round of applause for Melissa Bukta. Okay, so let me just start by saying, I love Alaska. I do, I really do. I love grow I've loved growing up here, I love living here. And when I say that living in our state is like living in a postcard or living in those travel brochures that we pass around to get all the tourists to come up here and everything, it's true. I mean, it, it, it really is true. Our state really does look like that. And I love it a lot, but it can be really difficult living here for someone who is partially blind, like myself. Uh, so a little bit about myself. I am what is considered legally blind, so I'm not sighted enough for the sighted people, but I'm not blind enough for the blind people either. <laughs> I walk this really weird line of uh, this just really weird gray area, just is kind of where I'm, where I'm living. And when you're growing up here in, in, in this state, you know, you do, your parents probably own a motorhome or a camper or a big van or a car or something, and you do what everybody does. You go on road trips. Road trips are great. You can bond with your family. You, you, you get lots of awesome stories and everything. But, you know, you're mostly, when you're in, you're, when you're in Alaska, you go on a road trip to see the wildlife, to see the scenery, because it's awesome. A lot of that is lost on someone who can't see. <laughs> you know, because we'd go down to, like, Denali, or, or, we'd, go, or we'd go to Seward or whatever, growing up in, in Anchorage. I moved up here to go to, uh, to college. But we'd go, to, we'd go up to Denali and everything. And did you know, did you know that blind people get in national parks for free? That's really great. Think about that for a second. Because really, what's a blind person going to do in a national park? I mean, you, can, I can, you know, everyone's like, oh, look, McKinley is so beautiful. Look at Denali. It's great. I can't touch Denali. Denali's not going to say something. I can't go like, you know, hey, Denali, how's it going? I'm doing fine. How are you? That's not going to happen. I, I can't go to Yellowstone and touch Old Faithful either. I can't really get very close to Old Faithful. I can hear it, so I guess that's pretty cool. I've never been to the Grand Canyon either, but I'm pretty sure that would also be lost on me. It's deep. Yay. <laughs> Fantastic. Can we go eat some tacos? <laughs> so, and of course, you know, like I said, you know, the wildlife. That's another really big thing about road trips here and, and living in Alaska. All the beautiful wildlife. You got your moose, your seals, your puffins, your polar bears, your brown bears, wolves. It's gorgeous. I love it. It's great. Um, and we'd go down, we'd go on these road trips and we'd bring our binoculars and everything. We'd go, my parents loved going down to Seward because it was so lush and beautiful and it was close, much closer than Denali. And they'd go, oh, look at, look at the eagles, look at the dull sheep sitting up there on the mountains. Oh, they're so beautiful. And we'd pull off to these overlooks, you know, to see the belugas and everything. And, and my mom would put these giant binoculars up to my face and, and try in vain to point my head in the direction that she thought the wildlife was. So we're sitting here, you know, she's like, look, it's over here. And my dad and my brother just uh, basically out of sheer embarrassment and or pity would just kind of sidestep away. Just, we, don't, we don't know these people. Uh, and people would come up and, and tap my dad on the shoulder and go, you know, do you know that woman? It looks like she's abusing her child. <laughs> no, no, they're just, she's just trying to see the belugas like everybody else. Uh, so, so I decided, because I was sick and tired of having my neck wrenched around by my mother, and I was sick and tired of my parents being so darn disappointed, that I couldn't see anything because they were like, we're not fulfilling your life, we're not giving you a good time. And I really, really wanted them to know that I appreciated all that they were doing and, and this, this experience and everything. So I decided 
to lie to my parents. I just figured, why not? I'm just gonna, everybody will be happy. So whenever we would see an eagle or a dull sheep or a bear, I'd put my binoculars up to my face and go, wow, that's amazing, it's so cool. And I couldn't really be that specific because, you know, I couldn't be like, oh, look at it, reach into the stump and just like, but there's, that's a boulder. Right, but the bear. So, so what I would do is I would pretend to see all these things and um, I'd have like stock footage from the Discovery Channel going in my head. Cause you know, I know what a bear looks like. So yeah. Oh, one day we went and took our annual summer road trip. We ended up in Seward. Seward, Alaska, it's a little harbor town for those of you who might not have been. It's where all the wildlife boats and cruises go out of and everything. So we got on this boat and we're all excited and I'm super excited, I wanna see a whale, you know? I wanna see an orca, I, I, I love orca whales. I think they're beautiful creatures and I think they're amazing. And that's what I wanted to see when we got on this boat. And of course we get on the boat, you know, two hours later, just doing our thing. We've seen seals and puffins and, and we saw a bear even and uh, we saw dolphins, it was great. It was, a, it was a really great day, we were lucky to get to see all this wildlife. And of course we saw glaciers and beautiful scenery, which is easy for me to see because glaciers don't move very fast. Um, and they make noise sometimes, which, which is nice. Very nice. Glacier, glacier, the most accessible of the Alaskan scenery, if you're blind. <laughs> So we're, we're going along in this boat and we're, we're doing our thing and, and I decided instead of feeling upset and down about seeing all these animals, I would just learn to experience and have fun on this cruise in my own way. So I stood on the, I'd stand on the bow of the boat and I would hold on to the boat railings and feel the perspiration and the cold water of the metal on my hands. And I felt the boat going up and down and up and down and rocking from side to side. I was one of the few people on the boats that it was lucky enough not to get seasick. So I would enjoy that feeling. I'd look at the rock formations as they would drift in and out of the mist as we would go past them. I let the wind go through my hair. It was beautiful. and. I was really, really enjoying myself. And I thought, you know, even if I don't see a whale, I've had an incredible day. Well, we were about to go back to the harbor and we pulled off into this cove because the captain had got a, a radio call from another ship that there was a pod of orcas in this cove. And so we pull up, we pull up into this cove and everybody is real quiet, you know, and the captain's like, okay, if we see whales, don't scream and point because then you'll just scare them away, you know? And so we're all, everyone's out of the cabins on the boat, and we're all on the railings, and this was like a triple-decker boat, it was a big boat, so all three decks full of people. And these, we see them, they're these, this pod of orca whales, and they're just hanging out in this cove. And they kind of disappear under the water, and the captain pulls up, and he shuts the boat engine off. We're all really, really quiet. And the whales decide to swim over towards our boat. So we're, we're all looking at these whales. And we're all just waiting, you know, we don't know what's gonna happen. I'm standing there, I got my binoculars, and I'm just thinking about whales, you know, in my head. I just saw Free Willy, so just putting those images in there, you know, just getting ready for another yay. But, the whales surrounded our boat, and right in front of me comes this dorsal fin. This beautiful, black, proud dorsal fin comes slowly up out of the water, right, you know, right in front of me, probably about to, to the end of this stage. You know, and I, I can see about three feet of, in front of me before everything starts to get really blurry. So this whale comes up. And I can see, it's right in front of me. He, she, I can see the white marks above, above the whale's eyes. And I can see the white marks from the belly that kind of come up on the back. I can see the whale's tail. And I just stood there. And I was holding on to the railing so tight, my knuckles were turning white. 
And I was just so afraid that if I moved or did anything or second-guessed myself, that the whale would just disappear. But the whale didn't. We just kind of stood there in each other's space, just sensing each other and looking at each other. And I can just remember thinking to myself, wow, finally, I'm here. We're here together. And I looked at the whale and I whispered so that no one else could hear, thank you. Thank you for letting me be here with you. Thank you for letting me see you. I didn't even have to use my binoculars. I was so happy. And I knew that when we got back to the docks, I wasn't gonna have to lie to my parents this time about seeing something that I really, really, really wanted to see. Now granted, the next day I, I went back to lying to my parents. And I, I still lie to my parents this, to this day, actually, about seeing, about seeing wildlife. We've just kind of come to accept it. It's our thing. So, thank you. <laughs> so great. Thank you. Yeah. Melissa Bookta, ladies and gentlemen. Now you get what I was talking about.